Guys, we've all been there. You do the same thing long enough, you get a little bit of gains in the beginning, but eventually things get stale. Whether you need to switch up your training because you've just been doing the same thing for too long, or you've done a completely fleshed out, fully realized contest prep, and now it's time to go back to square one, I'm going to show you the principles that I use to overhaul my training so I can get started in a new phase on the right foot. Now, as many of you know, I just finished my prep for Worlds. Unfortunately, I had to pull out because I popped positive for the virus two days before we were supposed to fly out, and it would not have been responsible for me to get on a plane with hundreds of other people and then go compete in an enclosed space with 400 other athletes from all over the world. Now, while I don't have reason to believe that this was some new special strain, I was not willing to risk being patient zero for the next round of shutdown. Now, the silver lining was that while I was watching everybody else compete at Worlds on a live stream, I was filled with this surge of motivation because I was determined to come back bigger, better, stronger. So while they were competing and then recovering from that competition, I was planning out and starting my next phase of training. And this is exactly how it went. So I've covered this before. This is in my books. It's in base strength. It's in peak strength. When we talk about different phases of training, whether you compete, whether you train recreationally, it always starts out broad, varied. You widen that base. You do the things you suck at. And then as you get closer to the end, as you get into the heavy specific phase of training, your focus narrows. Now you're at the tip of the spear. All of those qualities you're trying to funnel through this one very specific metric that you're trying to establish proficiency in. For powerlifters, you're just squatting, benching, and deadlifting. You're doing things very, very similar, very close to that. You're doing it in a very narrow range. Everything's heavy. It's getting your nervous system dialed in. It's getting your technique dialed in under those loads. In strongman, that has to switch. If I'm doing a deadlift for reps, I'm not going to be maxing out my deadlift several weeks before. I have to worry about conditioning and pacing and tempering myself to the demands of what I'm going to do in sport. So everything gets very, very specific to exactly what it is you wanna do. Now, most of you aren't going to be in this position and that's really, really good news for you. That gives you a ton of play in the joints for exactly how you're going to progress and for how long you can do it for before you're obligated to switch. But the same basic principles apply. Once you get stagnant in your training or once you're looking for a reason to switch, this is how you're going to evaluate those switches so you can get quick, dramatic improvements so you can get out of that rut so that you can get yourself adapting and set yourself up for when you go back to your preferred mode of training in the future. So right now, my primary goal is hypertrophy. I'm trying to add some size on my frame. I'm also trying to use the increased amount of work, frequency, volume that I'm going to be doing to help lean out. I'm looking to lose another five to 10 pounds of body fat so that when I go on my next competition prep, I'm in a much better position to cut weight and I'm going to be able to perform better given the amount of mass that I have. This is something that historically I've slacked on even as much as I've promoted it to you guys. I have not stayed in hypertrophy phases very long before going into my preferred method of training which emphasizes top sets, strength specific work, and uh, certain exercises that are going to help me perform at that top end. So this is a lot of the stuff that I've been missing. The next couple months, it's going to be this and only this. I'm gonna keep you guys updated with how my performance increases, how my body composition changes, and I upload my workouts daily on Patreon. So if you haven't, go ahead and check that out because this is where you see me put these principles into action in real time. So the principles I use for phase switching, for when I'm done with a heavy competition prep, I've hit all my maxes, I've hit all my PRs, now I need to widen that base out if I wanna hit a bigger number on the next go around. So the first thing I focus on is a radical change in rep range and percentage. The reason is that your body adapts to different rep ranges faster than it adapts to anything else. This is established training wisdom. If you're really, really used to doing threes and fives, doing tens is going to F your world up. And I'm going to give an example of what my first workout back was like, but I've experienced this so many times where I'm stronger than I've ever been. I'm peaked out, I'm hitting PRs at low end rep ranges. And then I go back and I do like a token set of 12 with like 135 and then I'm sore for four days. This is very, very established and you don't need a ton of effort. You don't need a ton of focus. You don't have to prepare. If you just get your toe in the water at these rep ranges you're not used to, it causes this massive disruption because all your time spent doing heavy work is time your body is not adapting to endurance and conditioning and the amount of volume and teardown associated with those higher reps. So the first things first, radical change in rep ranges and percentages. I usually start at 50, sometimes below 50% 
to get my toe in the water, to get myself exposed to those ranges so that it's not a shock to my system. Real quick, guys, I just wanna say thank you. Your support has been hugely integral to the growth of this channel, and it is the only reason that I can do this full time. And I'm super excited to finally be at a point where I can upload videos on a daily or semi-daily basis. I do have a favor to ask. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing because I do put out four, five, six videos a week sometimes, and you don't wanna miss anything. And I am doing that hard push to 100,000. Help me take this channel to the next level, and I'm going to commit to continuously making it better and better for you guys. Thanks so much for your support, guys. It is immensely appreciated. Now, this is a little easier for me to commit to because I need to do these higher rep ranges frequently in the contests that I do. So I have a direct incentive to maintain sets of 8, 12, and 15 reps. Uh, at Worlds, we saw guys on the deadlift, guys that were monster deadlifters that are very powerful, very explosive, that don't have a motor, that were underperforming on things like the deadlift for reps, where you saw their performance at the weight and there's no excuse for it. There isn't a reason to believe that they are more powerful for not having worked in these ranges. In fact, just the opposite. People that tend to expand their training over a long period of time tend to do better long term. So don't be afraid of high rep sets. Uh, don't be afraid to keep the percentages down. When you're making the switch, you're not trying to come in and hit the ground running. You're trying to establish a firm foundation of training that you can expand off of. And if you, you go ham right out of the gate, you're not gonna be able to do that. And that actually brings us to our second point. I always start way, way back so that I can acclimate. You don't wanna sour yourself on these first workouts. You don't want to get butterflies in your stomach or sweaty palms every time you go into squat or deadlift. You want to be comfortable. You want it to be just a run of the mill workout. So if you are peaked or if you have done a, a long period of time of just kind of heavy work in a very specific range, if you're not used to repeating sets of 15, trust me when I say it is going to take a very, very small dose to just ruin you. If you're a 500 pound squatter, a couple sets of 15 with 135 might leave you walking funny for a couple days, might leave you feeling a little queasy after that workout. But endurance increases extremely fast. So actually one of the ways that I look at these early workouts is conditioning work. It is expanding my tolerance to this type of work so that I can push the volume down the road. Because if you start out with the highest volume work when you're the least conditioned, it doesn't make any sense because you're not gonna be able to handle enough weight uh, to do what you want it to do. Whereas if you come in condition, then you can last through those repeating sets, volume's higher, intensity's higher, you get a much better result. So it's worth it to build, just takes a couple weeks, build that conditioning foundation, you will be better for it. But starting way back, this is my dirt road analogy that I featured uh, in, in one of my books before. Many of you may, may have seen, and this is kind of the reason that I like waves, I usually prescribe waves, because it's easy to conceptualize this run up over so many weeks. And as you change the threshold, it gives you time to adapt, to acclimate before you hit the gas. So this is our monster truck. Starting out weeks one, weeks two, you're on hard, hard pavement. You don't have to hit the gas to build up momentum. You're very efficient, you're cruising. You're, you're riding at a three out of 10 and you're picking up speed. Now, as you hit the dirt patch, you're gonna hit the gas a little bit more. You wanna keep that momentum going. So now you're, you're starting to rev the engine, but you're still not redlining it. Now, the last little patch you get into when all of those variables have increased when stress has grown and gotten higher and higher, that's where you punch it. That's where you go 10 out of 10. You hit the gas to the floor, you redline it, you get as far as you can. And then eventually you're gonna get so far in, you're gonna get stuck. Your only option is gonna be to back all the way out, get on that firm pavement again and start over. And that's how you conceptualize each block of training. So this graph kind of shows what I'm going for early on. This is actually what I did my first week back of training. I did a couple sets of 15. My squat workout, I'm not kidding. I went 135, 185, 225 for set to 15, and I shut it down. I did a couple leg exercises after that, two sets of high reps across two or three different exercises, and it was hard for me to get upstairs, hard for me to get out of my car. Just getting my toe back in the water, I was in such a different threshold than how I've been training, that was enough to cause this disruption. But into my second workout, I already felt that my wind was better. I was recovering better in between sets. I wasn't getting the tension headaches that I normally get when I push high rep sets. I was able to get more out of that training. So that's where I start to add sets. Now I start a little bit heavier. The second week I started at 225. And then I went in a pyramid fashion, a little bit heavier, a little bit heavier, started to strain a little bit. 
did a back offset. Nothing was remotely close to failure, but I was feeling the effort increase in this new range and the total amount of work I was doing was increasing as well. So I knew mathematically I was exposing myself to more stress. So as I'm doing more, my perception of the amount of work is lowering and that's the pocket that I wanna be in. At this stage, I am not grinding whatsoever. I am exposing myself to this amount of work and letting these increases in the amount of work drive progress. It's a very powerful thing to know how to do. You have to know how to make yourself grow without just going in and going balls out. You have to be able to, you have to, be able to look at the variables that make up a run of training and be able to predict what the effect on your body is gonna have given what you're already acclimated to. So what I like to do, and this is kind of the pattern, I start out with repeating high rep sets, very boring, but it's just to get the toe in the water. Then I move into a pyramid. This is how I start chasing heavier weight. I really like pyramids in hypertrophy phases, base phases, because it allows you to chase weight and kind of keep that in your mind. The goal is still to get heavier over time, but it doesn't do it in a way where that becomes the sole focus of your training. It does it in a way where you're more worried about surviving, you're building up fatigue, you're going into these low rep sets after having already done a ton of reps, very different type of fatigue. It, it emphasizes strength a bit, but it's not specializing in strength, that's the key difference. But you only need a little bit of heavy work to keep those qualities alive. So even here, even though this is very volume oriented, rep oriented, we're not completely abandoning strength specific stuff, we're still keeping that in the front of our mind. So I'll go 15, 12, 10, maybe do a back off set. Next week, I'm aiming to climb another rung on that ladder, I might go to a set of eight or a set of six. Week after that, I might go to a set of five or a set of four. And I'm always following it with back offsets. You notice that my back offsets climb as well. I'm trying to hit short-term PRs in those movements to demonstrate that my conditioning is getting better. I'm adapting to the volume. I'm not so fatigued. And this is what I do for my main sets. Now, after so many weeks, four or five, maybe six weeks, then I get into what I call grind mode. And this is where we flip it on its head. I've built this base of capacity. I've emphasized the high rep stuff. Now we're going to start to shift a little bit back, more strength specific. And I love reverse pyramids for this because it's essentially the same amount of work, but now you're just a little bit more fresh for the heavy stuff. So it's a little more specific to strength. You're using post-activation potentiation. So you're actually going to get a little bit more out of your volume work, but this is a very common a progression that I like to run for my main lifts when it's, I'm kind of off season, I do want to emphasize volume, but I still want, want to chase some weight. Something as simple as working up to a top five, drop back to a few sets of 10, and then drop back again and rep it out, just go for broke. And you can progress that linearly for a long time. You can add little bits of weight to your, to your top set of five. You can add little bits of weight to your back off sets. If it starts to get a little stale, you get a little stuck, move to a top set of three. If you have an off week, you don't have to deload completely because we're not in strength specific territory. We're not specializing. So you can come in, hit your top set of five, maybe a top single, because that's all you feel good for, drop back, commit to your volume work, and then commit to coming back the next week and picking up where you left off. You have a lot of options here. It doesn't require the strict rigidness. You can run this for a very long time. And this is where you're going to want to grind. Now it's only going to be when you start to get a little stagnant, a little sticky. You don't have a lot of room to increase on those sets of 10 or that back off set. So now you have to look again at switching and that's where you're gonna go into something that is more highly strength specialized. At that point, you should have gained a ton of mass. You should be very, very conditioned to this type of work. And now you're due to go into something that's going to be substantially heavier. And it's gonna put those 10s, 12s, 15s on the back burner. It's gonna feel, coming into and repeating sets of eight is going to feel like a vacation to you. And that's what you want. So this whole run up might take six weeks. I might do it for 12 if I'm having a ball and I'm not ready to specialize yet. If something is working for you, it's generally in your best interest to run it until the wheels fall off. Use these changes in your programming to solve problems. Don't try to outsmart your training. Don't try to be a step ahead. Let the training do its thing. And then when it stops, that's where you come in and make, make uh, certain changes. Now, regardless of how you're used to training, this is very easy to implement. All you have to do is be good with your exercise selection and prescribe an appropriate amount of work that you're actually putting a little bit of effort into. So I always like to emphasize what I suck at, Squatting, benching, deadlifting, that's fun for a certain amount of months and then it stops being fun. So the variety is gonna keep you fresh psychologically. This is where you fix weak points. You shouldn't be trying to fix weak points when you're five weeks out from a meet, okay? By then it's too late. This is where we're trying to fix weak, weak points. So you wanna pick exercise that you suck at, you're uncomfortable in so that you can try to become proficient. 
instead of squatting right now i'm rediscovering a narrow stance getting depth going very high bar more so than i'm used to so i'm going high bar ass to grass better developmental movement uh, my quads have been lacking because i haven't been able to squat as much as i like so this is going to fix that Instead of bench pressing, I'm going full JM press. I'm hammering my triceps. I'm actually doing my triceps first and then I'm doing chest presses afterwards. Same thing on shoulder day, twice a week on the triceps. I am going to become a master JM presser. And by that point, when I start pressing heavy again, I should just be on another level. At the very least, my arms will be a little bit bigger. And deadlifts are getting scrapped. I'm not doing any pulling, uh, heavy pulling from the floor. I just want pure developmental work on my posterior. I want my hamstrings to just hang like a couple of Christmas hams. And I'm doing a ton of volume. These are all very good volume exercises. You can do a lot of work, a lot of sets, a lot of reps. So it's very good for that. And you're doing a lot of varied accessory. This should look like standard bodybuilding. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Don't think that because you have some different goal that your workout should be entirely different. People have been training to grow muscle and improve their physicality for a century. So use the stuff that works. Use a variety of exercise, three to five exercise per body part. You could do that a couple times a week for most body parts, three to five working sets. You can train to failure. I train to failure on probably a quarter to a third of the movements that I do. The other ones are usually kind of warm up working sets, ascending up to a top set for my accessory stuff. And then I'll do some back off sets, drop sets, things like that. Short rest periods, 10 to 15 reps is a good basic hypertrophy range. Can you go higher? Can you go lower? Absolutely. But look to have, you know, 75%, the majority of your work in that 10 to 15 rep range, you will be a okay. And as long as you are hitting it week in, week out, as long as you are focusing on some type of progression where you can see those dials turning, you can see the amount of work growing, you're going to be just fine. And at the end of this thing, I fully anticipate that I'm going to look like a different thing. So I'm excited to keep you guys posted. And I'm even more excited to flash forward three, four months to see how this set me up for success for this next year of competition. So, so I'll see you on the other side, guys. Let's get to work. Leave your questions, leave your comments in the comment box. Better yet, take it to Patreon where you can see me apply these principles in real time. I upload my workouts daily with commentary and that is the easiest way to get in contact with me if you have a question. Thanks so much for your support, guys. It is immensely appreciated.